Crafting Cousins, Trish and I are so excited you decided to stop by our channel today. If you're new here, welcome! And if you're returning, we thank you so much. Today we have our final compilation for Fall 2023. Today we are featuring some of our very favorite Thanksgiving crafts, some new and some returning favorites. So grab your favorite fall beverage and let's get to crafting, y'all! y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these oven racks that I got at the Dollar Tree. I've already bent mine in half because I used it on a previous project. I'm also going to be using one of these foam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree. One leaf garland from Hobby Lobby. I got mine when they were two thirds off last year. Some wired ribbon, the one with the pumpkins on it came from Hobby Lobby. And this plaid came from the Dollar Tree. They are both two and a half inch wired ribbon. I also have these three wired ribbons. Two of them are one and a half inch and one is two and a half inches. The two and a half inch one came from Walmart and the other two came from Hobby Lobby in the fall section. I'm going to be using some brown paint that I found in my stash, just kind of a darker color and a lighter color. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and also this yellow by Apple Barrel. It is called King's Gold. These silk leaves that I found, I think they came off of a geranium bunch. Some floral wire in my wire cutters. Some zip ties and some wooden floral picks. My tin snips. And of course, my hot glue gun. Hey y'all, this is Kay. If you recall, about a month ago, I made a mailbox swag and I put sunflowers on it for the beginning of fall, the end of summer, and this is one of the racks I used because I used two. So it's already bent in half. I got it from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to use my tin snips and cut it into two equal parts. And that's what it looks like after that. Now I'm going to just fold those one on top of the other, kind of like I did when I had the two oven racks and I'm going to attach it together with a bunch of zip ties. And I'm using the ones for the Dollar Tree. They worked out just fine. I go through and cut off all of the excess. I decided when I made the last mailbox swag that I really wanted it to be just a little bit thinner and then it wouldn't be so much to cover up. And so that's what it looks like. We just make it into a U shape. You always use wire underneath to attach it later to your mailbox. So I'm going to start here again with zip ties and attach that swag I got from Hobby Lobby that is leaves. And I just work my way around the outside, down one side, across, down the side. Then we'll go down across the bottom and back up again. And it does take a little time and you'll see places that look a little bare, but hold on, that's not going to be a problem in the end. We're going to cover all of that up because we have lots of elements that we want to add to this. This is going to be my Thanksgiving swag, so it will hang on my mailbox in November. But, you know, if you don't have a mailbox that you can decorate, you could always leave this flat, do the same technique, and it could be your centerpiece for Thanksgiving Day. So here I am working my way around and in a moment you'll see me I'm going to take some of that floral wire that I showed you earlier and I liked the gold color because it was well hidden and I'm going to wire in several of those pieces so that the leaves stand up or that they're placed exactly where I want them. Mostly I want to cover all of the outside edges of the silver frame because we're going to add as I said before other elements in the middle part. Now I'm cutting off the excess. This was a small piece that was left. Later, I'm going to come back in. I'm going to add that piece back in where I need it on the very front that's going to be facing the highway. So again, let's finish up wiring on all of those leaves. The way this swag is made, they just kind of stick out from everywhere and that just gave it more of a uniform look. I could mold it to my wheel and make it look presentable once it's on the mailbox. I really like these styrofoam pumpkins from the Dollar Tree because my pumpkin needs to withstand the elements and it's pretty hot and rainy in Texas. But I did like that garish green, garish green, whatever. I painted it with some brown paint, starting out with the dark brown. 
And then I'm going to start painting the pumpkin and I'm using the pumpkin orange Waverly chalk paint and I gave it only one coat and I actually left some of the darker orange sticking through even though it doesn't look like on the camera that I did. But I did and I even wiped some off occasionally just so that it had a little more dimension and depth. And speaking of dimension and depth, now I'm going in with that King's Gold Yellow and I'm painting in those stripes and I just leave it wider in places and then thinner in others. I smear it with my finger, but you know, it's just to personal taste till you get it to where it looks, well, pretty much like a real pumpkin. For this project, I'm going to make two bows, one to go on each side of the mailbox swag, and I'm not going to use any of my bow makers. I'm going to come in and cut ribbons that I really like and I think go well together at 24 inches a piece. Now, that particular plaid right there, I did not have enough to cut two of for both bows, but that's okay, we'll use one in each one. But you do want to go in and cut enough pieces for each bow. As you can tell here, I thought I was going to just use one of each color to make my bows, but you'll see in a few moments how I start putting that together and I decided that it just wasn't a big enough, thick enough bow for my personal taste. But if you want to do it that way, that's fine. Once I get to this point, I'm just going to go ahead and fold all of these ribbons together in half with right sides on the outside. Then I'm going to come in and fold over one side a little past the middle. You want it to be at least an inch past the middle so that you have room to gather everything up. Here I am doing the yellow one, same thing. And then I just place it side by side with the one I just folded. It really doesn't matter what order you put them in. Here I am doing the orange one. Again, when I fold over, I'm going past that middle mark. The middle mark is where I will actually gather it together and put on my zip ties. Here I am with only half of the ribbon and I'm going in with the first zip tie. I'll place a chenille stem inside it, pull it tight. And then once I did that, I started fluffing it and you'll see in just a minute how full the bow is. Now for some projects that might work perfectly with that particular style or size bow. But I wanted mine to be a little thicker, so I'm going back in and again, folding over my materials and using them to make the bow twice the size I started with. So I'm placing the two pieces together. We'll cut off that old zip tie and I went and got a more heavy duty zip tie. Place it around the bunch where that fold mark would be Again, don't forget to put your chenille stem inside there. That way you can attach it later to your swag. Cut off the excess. Then we're going to start dovetailing those ends. You just fold it in half, cut from the fold out towards the wire. That way your scissors don't have to go through that wire a second time and make them really dull. And you can adjust the lengths if something didn't come out just right and a lot of fluffing as every bow should need. This is just a different style bow. Again, you don't need any special tools and it turns out pretty cute. Now I've got to go make a second one, but that's what it looks like y'all. And you know what? I think I forgot to show you that I did add some of the light brown paint to the side of that pumpkin stem to make it look better. And then I also came in with this leaf and I just sort of stuck it down into that styrofoam pumpkin and secured it with glue. This next part is totally optional, but I took some of jute covered wire and I just twisted around a pencil to make some tendrils. You need to secure the ends with hot glue or it will unravel on you. But I did, and then I left one end, the wire sticking out, so that gave me a better way to attach it to the pumpkin. And I just stick it down in there with some glue on the wire. And that became the tendril. Now for this bottom part, I'm going to use those floral picks that I showed you, and I used glue to place them down in there. And they do have wire at the top, so we can wire them to our mailbox swag. And this is the point where I went back in with that last piece of leaves and I wired it to the front. I think I also used some zip ties to make sure it stayed in the wind. And um, that covered up that very edge so that it looks good once I get it on my mailbox. For my pumpkin, I'm just going to move those leaves around on the top part of the wire frame and I just wire it down here at the bottom. I turned it over so you can see that I'm pulling those wires from the picks through. 
and then I'm going to attach one bow to each side and that's why it's not so critical that the leaves are in the middle because you're using other elements to cover it up and you can add as many things as you want to. I'm keeping it a little simple because I like my Thanksgiving crafts a little more simple than the other particular holidays. Happy Thanksgiving, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use one of these wood rounds from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of three for $7.99, but they're 40% off every other week. They aren't as thick as the ones from Home Depot, but they work nicely for these small projects. One of these pages from this Dollar Tree calendar. Some half wooden beads. I got these from Amazon and I only ended up using the small ones some Waverly chalk paint in white, some Mod Podge, some super glue wood glue from Dollar Tree, a sawtooth hanger, some ribbon, one came from Dollar Tree, one came from Hobby Lobby, some fall florals, I only ended up using a sunflower, my Distress Oxide ink in blender, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was paint my wood round so that it could dry. I'm painting the back of it, the sides, and just the edges of the front. I wasn't sure how much would show and I wanted it to have that finished look. You don't have to paint the back of this. You could just leave it natural, but I wanted it to match. Now we're going to take out one of our pages from our calendar. I decided to use the one from November. I really love this watercolor look to it. I centered my wood round on it, traced around it, and then cut it out with just using my scissors. I did cut just inside the line to make it fit better. Now we're gonna put down a light coat of our Mod Podge. You don't want to make this too heavy because this paper is really thin and it's going to wrinkle up some, but you want to minimize it as much as possible. Then I used my little spatula and I got out as many of the wrinkles as I could. I figured out how many of those little wood beads that I needed and then I put some of my chalk paint into this baggie with a little bit of water and mixed it up and then I dump in my beads close it up and just kind of mush them around and that paints them just as fast as that I'm gonna pour them out on some wax paper and leave them to dry but y'all know that I am NOT a patient person so I helped it along with my heat gun now that my Mod Podge is dry, I take a sanding block and I go around the edges of this and I sand down. This is going to take off any of the excess paper that might be overhanging on the edges and it gives it a real finished look. Then we're going to take our beads and use some of our wood glue and I'm going to glue them down around the edges. Now you could use hot glue for this, but sometimes it has a tendency to pop up. So I like to use the wood glue. It does take a little longer to dry, but if you leave it for about 20 minutes, it sets up nicely. Now I'm gonna put these all around the edge, but I am going to leave a space so that I can put my bow there. Once all of my beads are glued down, I wanted to distress them. Y'all know I love distressing. So I grab my distressing ink and my blender and I just kind of lightly go over these and give them a distressed look. My husband said they look like marshmallows now, but you know, I'm okay with that too. It is fall and I love roasted marshmallows. <laughs> Now we're gonna make a bow for this. I decided on a shabby bow, so I cut four pieces of each one of my ribbons to length. I think this was about six inches. And then I'm going to stack them on top of each other, fold them in half, and dovetail the ends. That just means cutting at an angle. Once I get my ends dovetailed, I'm gonna stack them up on top of each other in a crisscross fashion. And then I gather up that center, pinch it up tight, and I use a piece of twine that I wrap around it a couple of times and tie into a double knot at the back. We'll just trim off those tails and then fluff up our bow. 
I'm going to go ahead and put my hanger on before I glue my bow down. I figure out where the middle is and then I use a pokey tool or an awl to make my little holes and I couldn't find my hammer. <laughs> so I started using my screwdriver to tap it down and then I figured out that I could just push on it hard and it pushed the nail through. Now we will glue down our bow with a little bit of hot glue right there in that opening we left open. And then I took one of these little sunflowers and glued in the middle and that made our project finished. It's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these rectangular pieces of wood that I got at the Dollar Tree. They are approximately 3 inches by 9 inches and they come in a pack of 6. I will be using one of these laser cut words from Hobby Lobby. They come in a pack of 8 for $3.99. Some chalk paint in the colors Cashew and Sage. One of these stickers that I got at the Dollar Tree some two and a half inch ribbon that looks much like burlap, and finally some jute twine and my hot glue gun. I'm going to be making a quick and easy simple fall sign. The first thing I did was get out my cashew chalk paint and give the front and the sides a really good coat. It only took one. And then I took the word gather and I'm giving it a coat in the green color. It's called sage. One of my favorite colors for fall this year. I only painted the front. Now I'm going to cut a piece of my ribbon. It's about two and a half inches wide. And I'm just going to cut a piece big enough to go around the edge of my sign. And I'm just going to take a little hot glue and place it on the edges of my ribbon. And then fold it around and attach it in the back there. A cheap and inexpensive thing to do would be to use some scrap burlap and just kind of fray the edges and attach that around the side and that would work also. To dress it up further, I'm going to be taking some of this jute twine that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to attach it in the back and then wrap it around, oh, about three or four times. And then I'll just cut off the edge and glue that on the back as well. This would also be a time you could use some ribbon if you would like. I love these pumpkin stickers that I found at the Dollar Tree. They have really stepped up their game this year. And so I took off a set that has three pumpkins and I'm going to secure that right down to the bottom right hand corner of my sign. Now I'm going to attach the word gather to the left side of our sign. I'm just going to use a little hot glue to secure it and I will press down on both sides to make sure it kind of wraps around that twine that is sticking up just a little bit. And it does have a little give, although I was impressed with the thickness of these words, y'all. Just a quick and simple, easy project. I really like the way it came out. I think it's going to look great on my tear tray. Happy fall, y'all! For this project, we're going to take these two wine glasses that I picked up at the thrift store for a quarter, and we're going to turn them into some candle holders. The first thing I did was take some Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin and paint the bottom part of the glass. I made sure that I gave it a good cover. It did take two coats. The first coat looked kind of streaky, I guess because it's on glass. Um, and I also noticed that sometimes the brush would pull the paint back up away from the glass. So if you guys have any tricks for painting on glass, leave those down below and let me know what the best way is to make it stick. After I got my glasses painted orange, I took two different shades of yellow and I mixed it with some of my orange and just made some streaks on this to make it look more like a pumpkin. I wanted to give it a little bit of dimension. Once they were dry, I took two different colors of green acrylic paint and started painting the stem. But I quickly found out that that wasn't going to stick real well and it was probably going to take many, many coats to make it cover. So I grabbed some ivory chalk paint and went ahead and painted the stem and the bottom part of the glass. Um, this is going to be like my base coat and then I can go back over it with my acrylic paint. 
Now I'm going to take some of my brown chalk paint and do some of the lines on this to make this look more like a pumpkin. The chalk paint did come out rather harsh, so I took a little bit more of my orange and kind of mixed it onto that same brush and went back over it and it softened it up and now it's starting to look more like a pumpkin. Now that my stems are dry, I'm going to go back with those green acrylic paints and go over that chalk paint and now it's starting to look better. It's covering. I still did a couple of coats because it was kind of thin and then on the very top of that or I guess it would be the bottom of the glass, I went ahead and put one coat of the acrylic paint. It is very thin and it didn't stick well, but it gave it that translucent look and I really liked how that looked, so I just did one. Now I'm going to take some leaves from some fall florals that I got from the Dollar Tree and glue them on at the top of the pumpkin, the bottom of the stem, just to give it a little decoration and make it look more like a pumpkin. I also took a little bunch of these berry balls that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree as well and glued one little bunch on the front of my leaves. Then I took a tinsel pipe cleaner that I got from the Dollar Tree and wrapped it around the top of the pumpkin. This just kind of helps cover the top of those leaves where I glued them on and it gives it a little more decoration. I took a paintbrush and wrapped it around it several times and kind of gave it those little curly cues. Now we're going to do the same thing to our other glass. I actually added three leaves onto this one, but I wish I hadn't. I liked it better with just the two, but I was afraid if I took it off, it was going to peel my paint back off and I didn't want to have to try to fix that. I added my berries, then I took my pipe cleaner and wrapped it around my brush and made the little curly cues that you get on those stems. And now we have candle holders. Hey y'all, it's Kay. I'm going to be making a centerpiece for my Thanksgiving table. I'm going to be using one of these five gallon paint sticks. Some of this natural colored polypro mesh ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. It is 10 inches wide. And I will also be using some orange mesh ribbon that is five and a half inches wide. Some chenille stems and one zip tie. This two and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. This beautiful wired ribbon that I got at CraftOutlet.com. This orange burlap two and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Walmart. This one and a half inch wired ribbon that I got at Hobby Lobby. This natural colored mesh tubing that I got from the Dollar Tree. These pumpkins that I got from the thrift store recently, but I also saw some very similar at Target. Some assorted florals from the Dollar Tree. These pomegranates from the Dollar Tree. And finally, my heavy duty stapler and my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was place a dot at one and a half inches in from the right and the left end of my paint stick. And then I placed a dot every three inches after that. So at one and a half and then four and a half and so on as I worked my way down the paint stick. So that gives us a total of seven dots. And so I'm going to take my chenille stems and I'm going to twist one around the back and just a couple of times to make it really tight around the paint stick everywhere that I have a dot. You just need to give it a couple of tight twists to keep it nice and tight. And here you can see it as I turn it over and let you see the side. Now I'm going to turn it on the back and I'm going to place one of my heavy duty staples right in the center of each of the ties just to further secure them to my board here. And then I take a little hot glue and I'm going to place it right on top of those staples and that also serves to keep it from sliding around on my table. I'm going to take this beautiful natural colored snowball mesh and I pulled it across my table. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and cut seven pieces because that's how many chenille stems we have at 20 inches wide. Just keep pulling it across and if you need to, you can weight it down. 
but this snowball mesh is really very thick and it works a lot like fabric. Now I'm going to take my pieces and I'm going to fold it towards the center. I'm going to overlap those raw edges and then gather it in the middle. Just going to kind of pleat it in my hand till it looks much like a butterfly. And then I bring it over to my chenille stems and I'm going to give it a couple of hard twists and a little fluffing. And that's all we're going to do. Let me show you again, kind of in real time. I'm folding it over, covering up the raw edges, gathering it in the middle, arrange it in the shape of a butterfly, and then bring it over to my chenille stems and give it a couple of hard twists. And that's pretty much it. We're going to do the exact same thing for the rest of our chenille stems. And you don't have to worry about any spaces that are showing right now on our stick there between our chenille stems. Eventually, with all of the things we're going to put into this centerpiece, none of that will even show. Right now, we're just getting a good base onto the paint stick. And there's how it looks so far. Now I'm going to cut my five and a half inch orange mesh. I'm going to cut pieces that are 10 inches long. I'm going to use my rotary cutter and I just weight it down as I need to. And I just continue to cut those 10 inch pieces. I end up needing 14 of the 10 inch pieces. I'm going to take my orange mesh and I'm going to roll it into a curl and I bring it over to my centerpiece and I'm going to twist one down into my chenille stems. And that's when I decided I needed two for each piece. And so then I take the second one and then I'll roll that up as well. And then I'm going to crisscross it like in an X and place it down into my chenille stem. And that's what I'm going to do for all of my chenille stems. So we will have seven sets of two. But before I did that, I decided I would go ahead and roll all of my pieces and put two of them together on a clip. Kind of like an assembly line. I just kind of work better that way. You can do it just one at the time if you want to. But I like to take mine and clip them all together so that when I start putting them into my centerpiece, I'm doing the same thing over and over. And now it's time to place all of the orange mesh into our centerpiece. Just give them a good crossing like an X and twist them down into the chenille stems and do that seven times. And I should have told you to place the raw edges downward and that just keeps the mesh from unraveling and sticking up. And there it is so far. Now it's time to cut some ribbon tails. I'm going to be using this little 12 inch board that I made to help me measure my ribbon. I'm just going to hold it at one end and then start wrapping it around my board until I get it around six times. And once I do that, I'm going to cut off the end first of all, and then I'll start sliding it off of the board. That does take a little bit of time if you get it really tight. And then once I do that, I'll just clip the ends and I have all six pieces cut at one time. And the next thing I do is cut six pieces of the ribbon that's two and a half inches wide and has sleeves on it. Same procedure, so I get my six pieces easily. And after that, I'm going to take a little time and I'm going to fold all of my pieces of ribbon in the middle with the right sides on the inside. Again, I work best when I use an assembly line method. And then I'm going to fold those open ends of my ribbon and cut an angle from the center to the outer edge and dovetail those ends. It's much easier to do it ahead of time than after you put it down into the centerpiece. Always cut from the center down to the edge. And there's all of our pieces. Now it's time to place them into the centerpiece. I always put the leaves down first, then my second ribbon. I place them at an X, down into the chenille stems, and give it a couple of tight twists. And then once you do that, you want to fluff those ends of ribbons because it's wired, you just kind of pull up under the middle and fluff it out, and it looks so professional. 
and then we're going to do the same thing. I didn't do it here, but what you want to make sure you do is the same ribbon that you put up on the left hand side, you want to do that each time the same way. And I also made sure once I turned it around, I faced my trucks out to the edge on the opposite end. Well, on both ends actually. But I faced the truck to the outer edge each time. We don't have to put one in the middle because we're going to make a big bow for that middle piece. So I'm going to start out with about eight inch tails and about four and a half inch wide loops, maybe five inches on this bottom one, starting out with this orange burlap type ribbon. And you will see here in a minute, I'm going to place one loop up and one tail down and then one loop down and one tail up, basically in opposite directions. Then I come in with my second ribbon and I'm going to use this leaf ribbon. I only had a little bit left, but it actually worked out perfectly. I folded it in the middle, placed it down in my pegs and then just fold it in the sides. And that was all I had left on the roll. And then I'm taking this yellow ribbon that's one and a half inches wide and I'm going to do two loops on each side and one tail on each side. And of course, one tail is up and one tail is down. And then I come in with my last ribbon and I'm also going to do four loops. They're a little smaller than the ones beneath it. And I make sure that I have two loops on each side and a tail up and a tail down. And then I'm going to take this zip tie, place it around my bow, place a chenille stem inside, pull it tight and cut off that excess. And then what do we have to do? We have to fluff and we have to trim those ends. We have to dovetail the ends. There is a lot of work to making a bow, but it is so satisfying when you see it come together. And even when I place it down into my centerpiece, it will require another fluffing. And now that I've done that, I'm going to go in and take those center chenille stems and I'm going to turn them around my pencil, just kind of twisting them around, making loops, and then I'll just push it down into my centerpiece to hide it, and then bring over my bow, and I'm going to place it and tie it right around the stick with the chenille stem that I made it with. And that's a good basis for our centerpiece. Now I'm going to cut my mesh tubing. I need six pieces that are 20 inches long. Then I'm going to take it and fold it in the middle and just make a very simple bow by bringing in the edges and twisting it down into my chenille stems. And once I finish that, I'm going to again curl it around my pencil and shove it down into our centerpiece. I'm not going to cut them off because I'm going to use that to attach some of my items. And again, let's go through and put the rest of our mesh tubing into our centerpiece. Every item you add makes your centerpiece more full and more luxurious. I like to do this at the end of the season when I've made all of my projects and I try to use up my leftover mesh, my leftover mesh tubing, leftover ribbon, all of the things from the fall projects that just happen to have a little bit left of. And there's what we have so far. And now I'm going to use my florals into my piece. I'm just going to push this leaves down toward the bloom and we'll just clip those off with our wire cutters. Again, I'm throwing everything I've got left from this season into this piece. Then I'm using the mesh to hold my pieces and also the tubing and whatever holds it down to this centerpiece. I also use the chenille stems to kind of twist it down in there and anything that feels a little loose, I'll just use a little hot glue to tack that down as well. And so I'm placing in first these sunflowers on each side. Now I'm placing in some pomegranates. I wish you could tell how pretty they are on camera. In person, they are much prettier. They just scream fall. And I'm putting about three pieces on each end. Then I'm taking these little pumpkins and they're styrofoam. So I'm taking a little skewer and I push it right down the center from the bottom. Use a little hot glue to make sure it stays in place. And after I get both of them done, I'm taking my wire cutters and I'm cutting it at an angle. 
maybe about four inches from the bottom. And then we'll bring those over and just place them down into our centerpiece where we think they look good. I'm not a florist, but I do love poking posies, y'all. When you finish this centerpiece, it's about 27 inches long. It makes quite the statement piece. Now I'm going to bring in these little miniature mums. They're in a beautiful orange color. And I'm just going to place, oh, about four cuttings, two on each end. And that kind of finishes out our piece. I think my Thanksgiving table is going to be a big hit this year. Happy fall, y'all. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pumpkin can that I rescued from the garbage, some ground cinnamon, some Mod Podge, some floral foam, and some fall florals that I had left over from other projects. These came from Dollar Tree. So I love using old cans to make little arrangements with, and I thought this pumpkin can would be perfect to make one to use during the month of November right through Thanksgiving. I didn't like that it looked so new though. I wanted it to have that old rusty look to it, and the best way to do that is to use ground cinnamon. So I grab my Mod Podge and a brush and I just start painting on the Mod Podge and then I dip my brush in my cinnamon and go over it and it starts coating it and it makes it look old. I did figure out that it was easier to just pour the cinnamon on. It looked a lot better than dipping my brush into it. And once I did that and I got it on like the edges of the paper and stuff, it really started looking old and rusty and perfect. Now that our Mod Podge is dry, we can start decorating this. I took my floral foam and cut off a piece that would fit in there, and I didn't worry about using any glue because it fit really snugly. And then I just took my floral pieces and I cut them apart and I started sticking them in. This is a great way to use up those bits and pieces and odds and ends that you have left over at the end of the season. I love having these little pieces sitting around my house. I think it just gives a touch of the season to any room that you have them in. And I've told you guys before, I am not a florist. I literally just do what Kay says is poking posies. I stick things in until it's full and I like how it looks. I was really pleased with how this one looked. I was able to use most of my florals and I'll only have just a few left to have to store for next year. Once we get these poked in, this is finished. This is Kay. For this project, it's going to be a quick and simple item for my mantle. I'm going to be using these stickers that I got from Target in the dollar spot. They have two in the package for $3, and they're a beautiful copper color. I'm going to use one of these 8x10 canvases that I got at the Dollar Tree, some antiquing wax by Folkar, and some Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. So the first thing we have to do is get this canvas off of this frame. I'm going to be using a utility knife and cut down each side. And I have used these frames many times before, but this one was really stubborn. I had to use a screwdriver, that utility knife, and I just kept pulling on it till I eventually got it off of there. And then once I do that, I'm going to come in with my scissors and I'm going to trim this up because I'm going to be reusing it. You want to cut it just inside the fold lines. Then I just cut the decal into two parts because it made it easier to use because I'm using transfer tape to put mine down onto the canvas. 
and probably I should have chosen my transfer tape a little more carefully. This one was very sticky. It was just something I had in my stash, but that's okay. I did make it work. I'm just going to trim that up and I'll use a little spatula or a little squeegee. You could use a credit card and I'm going to smooth that down onto the transfer tape and make sure that I'm able to peel it off. Once I peeled off that backing, I'm going to place it down onto the canvas. And please note that I'm using the back side of the canvas, the side that looks more like linen, not the bright white shiny side. And because my transfer tape was so sticky, I had to take my time and just work my way through it and ease off my letters down onto the canvas. And as I opened them up, that's when I discovered that they were actually really beautiful copper colored letters. And as I was working on it, it started rolling up, but I fixed that. I placed some clips from the Dollar Tree on each corner and I let this dry for several hours. I'm going to be using antiquing wax and I'm going to spread it with a baby wipe onto the frame. I'm going to stain the front, the sides, and the edges. I like to use antiquing wax because it's user friendly and it doesn't have any odor that might set off any allergies or asthma. And by the way, those clips worked perfectly. My piece stopped rolling up and it dried nice and straight. Now I'm just going to go in with hot glue and I'm going to seal those edges. I'll flip it over on the back after I get it started and just glue it down to the frame. You could also use a heavy duty stapler. I just couldn't find my staples today. And with that, this project is done. Very easy, but very Thanksgiving like. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pumpkin sign that I picked up from the Dollar Tree. A straw hat, I got mine from the Dollar Tree, but I see these all the time at the thrift store. Some fall leaves I had left over from other projects. I did get these all from the Dollar Tree. Some fall berries. Some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. A stocking footie from the Dollar Tree some batting but you can use anything for stuffing some twine and my glue gun and some glue sticks so i'm trying to use up some of these fall items that i have picked up since this is going to be our last fall video for this season and one of the things i really wanted to make sure that i used so i didn't have to store was this pumpkin sign I think that it'll be perfect for the project that I had in mind, but I did need to cut it down some. Since this is going to be a gnome, I needed to kind of make it more into a pointed fashion at the top. So I cut off the little bumps on the second pumpkin, and then I cut off the edges of the hat and kind of made it more pointed at the top. Once I had that done, I grabbed my sanding block and took off as much of that glitter as possible. Now we're going to work on the hat. I'm using this straw hat. I love to pick these up from the Dollar Tree, but if yours doesn't have these, I do see them at different thrift stores all the time. I cut up the back of this so it would open it up, and then I just start kind of forming it to the top of my sign. I use my hot glue to hold it down, and I would just press it down and then just keep cutting it off and pulling it together. I do want to have a little bit of a ruffle at the bottom of this, but I didn't want it to ruffle out as much as this hat really does so you see that I just keep cutting it down pulling it gluing it down and be careful if you're doing this because the hot glue does come through those little holes that's there and I just kept on till I was happy with my hat now we are going to start working on his beard I wanted to use up as many of these leaves as I could and I really didn't have a rhyme or reason for how I was doing this other than I knew I wanted them to all point down so that they would start forming into what I hoped would be a beard. I did want to put 
as many of the green ones on the bottom as possible. I wanted to have the colorful ones showing the most. And then when I got down to the bottom, I had this one leaf that I really loved that I thought just kind of pointed out that beard perfectly. So I put that down at the bottom and then I just kept filling in until I was happy with my gnome's beard. I'm only using hot glue to secure these and it worked out perfectly, but you could use any glue that you wanted. Now I'm going to cut a piece of my ribbon to decorate his hat. I wanted to give him a band and I love this burnt orange color ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I cut it down and just kept gluing it until it fit around the hat. It didn't really matter what the back looked like. And now I'm going to take another piece of this ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree just to give it some contrast and kind of break up how big that bottom ribbon is. And I glued it around as well, tacking it there in the center. Now I'm going to use a leaf and some of those little berries and give it a little bit of decoration. I know y'all see that pumpkin nose that I have down there, but just ignore it. My idea was that the pumpkin would make the perfect little nose for him, but I wasn't really crazy about how it looked. So I took a picture and sent to Kay and to my sister and my sister was like, well, I think it's cute, but my niece, my niece is always honest. She said, what is wrong with his nose? And that just verified what I was feeling. So I grabbed one of those little stocking footings. I stuffed it with some of my batting. I used a rubber band on the back to close it up and then cut off the tail of it. Then I stripped off that little pumpkin, used some hot glue and glued it in there. And yep, this was so much better than that pumpkin was. The last thing we need to do is make a hanger. So I'm going to use some of my twine and a darning needle. I thread it through there and then I just take that needle and go through the holes in the hat, pull it through, tie a knot in it, making a loop, trim off those ends, and this project's finished. Today I'm going to be working on a centerpiece for our tablescape for fall. This is a container that I got with some greenery in it, and yes, it's quite large. It's about 18 inches long. It came from Michael's in a grab box. Back in February, if you recall, I was lucky enough to find six large boxes for $4 each. This box had about seven slightly different sizes of these greenery baskets. So we're going to use this as the base for our centerpiece today. And we're going to dress it up and make it fall. First of all, I have some mums that I got from the Dollar Tree. I have a couple of bunches of each of these in the three fall colors. Of course, I have a couple of different kinds of sunflowers. I love sunflowers for fall. And I have some fall leaves, pomegranate spray, and I'm not sure what these are called, guys, but you've seen me use them before. They look kind of like cattails, only much prettier. So these are some of the things we're going to be using in our basket. I also have some pumpkins that may or may not work. I really think this big one's going to be the best choice. This centerpiece also is going to have a large bow right in the center. And I have some different selections that I have pulled. You know how this process is. It's kind of creative and what works ends up in the bow. So I have these five. And of course I have some basic supplies like my wire cutters, some chenille stems, some wooden skewers, my floral wire, which is quite messy, but that's kind of how I roll around here. And let's get started. Okay, let's get started making our bow. I'm using this two and a half inch ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby, first of all, and that'll be the base of our ribbon. We're going to make about a seven inch tail Put that into our easy bow, squish it down, pull it forward, and then we're gonna twist it and make about a five inch bow on each side, loop rather. Put that down, twist. Making sure I have it the correct way because it does have a right side and a wrong side. And again, 
twist it this time because we're only doing two loops of this color. And then we want about a seven inch tail. And again, we can trim it up later. So that's our first ribbon. And then we'll move to the next one. For our second color, we're going to use this orange burlap. So I'm going to take it and put it in here first. We'll put our tail about lined up with the last one. Twist. We'll make this one just a tiny bit shorter than the last one. And twist. And there we go. And pull it to the front. This ribbon came from craftoutlet.com. This ribbon came from the Dollar Tree, so I am using some Dollar Tree ribbon. And do it the same way, of course, making it just a bit smaller. And I love this ribbon because it's going to go perfectly with the things we've bought to go in our tablescape. So we cut that off, and now I'm going to take a zip tie and place it in to the bottom here and get it started, and then I'll slide this to the back and add a chenille stem to actually attach it. Just like that. Take it off of here. It's like a big stack. You can see it right there. It's pretty thick. I'm going to flip that to the back, though. We'll do our fluffing in a moment. Take a chenille stem, place it into the back here about halfway, and then we'll start to tie that down. This is chenille stem, that's how we'll attach it. And we probably don't need a whole one because we're going to use a dial rod. And then we'll clip that off. And that's our bow. And now you have to do a lot of fluffy. So you'll come in here and pull one to the top and one to the bottom. We've got our tails to clip. And you can dovetail your ends as you go. But guys, you just fold it in half and cut from the center to the wire. And you have a nice dovetail. And we'll do that all over. Just like so. Let me do that off camera and I'll come right back. So let me move my floral back in to our frame and then take our bow and let me show you down on top. And so the bow takes up a lot of room already. And then we can use all of our florals to bring the decoration out even further. Bows always need a lot of fluffing, and I'm sure once I get it on the plant, it will still need some fluffing. But I'm going to go into the back and try to attach this wooden dowel with my pipe cleaners. And once I try it out, I can put some glue on it too. And I think I wanna keep it as vertical as I can. And wrap that one around. Glue on there. So now that I have my bow on this dowel, I'm going to take it and put it down in my pot. Probably going to need to cut some off, and I am. I'm just going to take off a couple of inches. And place that down in the center of my plant there. I think that's going to be cute. First, I'm going to start preparing these mums. They came from the Dollar Tree, but they're really cute this year. I'm going to take off the tag that comes on them. And you want to take each stem 
I'm just going to bend these out a little and push the green leaves up to the top because we'll keep those in our decor. That one's missing one. And then I'm going to cut them off kind of long for this project because I'm not sure exactly where each one of them will go. So I'm going to come in and cut them off. We'll take some of these burgundy ones. And put them in. Put the yellow ones in. I'm just going to kind of do the same thing on each end. Right now. And these aren't real long, so if you need some really long ones, you can always add some more of those little skewers to it. Sorry if I'm making you dizzy. I'm kind of moving it where I can see and get some color going. I think that's coming together rather nicely. You don't want it so high that you can't have a conversation across the table. So hey y'all, it's Trish. Today I'm going to show you two fast and easy fall projects that you can use on your table for a tablescape or anywhere in your home for home decor. For our first project, I'm going to be using these small mini eggs that I got at Hobby Lobby. They have them left over from Easter and I only paid 15 cents for the bag. I picked out seven of them and took them apart and now I am painting them with my Waverly chalk paint in the color Truffle. I wanted to have a nice brown color on these because we're going to be making some acorns. It did take two coats of the chalk paint. The first coat just kind of looked streaky and you could still see the color under it so I went ahead and gave them a second coat and that gave me that nice coverage I was looking for. I did want to make them look more like acorns so I took some of my beachcomber beige acrylic paint and did um, a little bit of dry brushing on it but I got too much <laughs> so I used some more of my truffle and just kind of softened it out and made it look more like an acorn. Once those were dry, I put my top and my bottom back together and made sure I snapped them really well so that they were closed completely. Now we're going to take some twine and cover the top part of our acorns and this is going to be our cap. I just took my hot glue and I would put down a little bit of glue and then take my twine and go around it until I had completely covered that top. This does take a little bit of work, but I just put on a craft video and kind of watched that and put my twine on my acorns. It's actually kind of therapeutic whenever you're just doing that repetitive stuff. 
When I got to the top of the acorn, I took a piece of a limb that I got out in the yard. I cut a small piece of it off and I hot glued it to the very top of the egg. Then I just put some more hot glue in there and finished twisting my twine around and that helped secure my little piece of limb to the top of the egg. Now I'm just going to take my lighter and run it over the top of it. This is going to get rid of all of those glue strings that you get from hot glue and it takes off the little strings from the twine. Now we're going to look at it one more time. They were all the same, so we'll only do it twice. We put our twine around the top of our egg. And I do this at the fat top, or the fat end, not the skinny end. Then we add our little piece of twig in there and finish wrapping around that with our twine to seal it all in. Now we take our lighter and go over and get rid of those glue strings and the little strings from the twine. so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.